You describe yourself as an obsessive keeper, which I absolutely love. Can you explain what you mean by that and why is it that you hold on to clothes? Well, I'm an obsessive keeper, but I don't want to give the impression of being a hoarder because that I am not. <laughs> I don't keep irrationally. I keep very deliberately. Keeping has become a bit of a mantra for me um, because we are faced with the biggest throwaway society that I have ever seen or heard of. And I've made keeping um, a huge pleasure for me. It's a long conversation that includes, it includes giving work to people, it includes learning new things, it includes playing games. And that I do all, you know, with, with my clothes. Explain the game that you play with yourself. Sometimes I will take a bunch of clothes, I will put them in a bag, in a pretty vintage bag, which is either under my bag, uh, bed or in the attic, and I will just forget about them for quite a long time. When I reopen this treasure box, everything feels new, everything feels different, everything will be restyled in a completely different way from when I first hid it. Your book, Loved Clothes Last, has so many wonderful tips on how to really care for our wardrobe and get the most out of our wardrobe. What are your non-negotiables? Um, I mean, for me, the first non-negotiable is understanding why. And the book is uh, a bit of a how-to, um, how to mend, how to repair, how to do this. But most of all, it's a why-to. When we buy something, uh, we don't want to just look for the size. We want to also buy something that fits with our principles. I do really think, though, that you have some fantastic practical tips that help us. I must say I love the notion of not doing the washing so much so that our clothes last longer. Can you explain to us exactly what washing does to our clothes? One example would be your average polyester, yoga wear or camisole. So we know that when we wash polyester, we release millions of microfibers, which have been found from the bottom of the ocean to the top of Mount Everest. So to wash a polyester garment less is imperative. So to buy a garment that doesn't need to be washed frequently if we know it's polyester is also imperative. Merino wool, for instance, which is 100% better than any yoga, athleisure, acrylic thing you can wear because merino wool respects your natural body temperature and gets rid of natural odors. So merino wool doesn't need to be washed so often. And trust me, however cheap the piece of fabric you've got, if you treat it exactly the same way as you would a designer piece, it will go a really long way. It's us that often treat cheap clothing like they were cheap clothing. So how do you feel about a big wardrobe clean out and donating to a charity shop? Well, it's a bit of a wide question in the sense that it very much depends on what those clothes are and in what conditions they were given. I mean, you know, the point is that donating to charity implies that's a gift. So that's not dumping. So if you are bringing to charity stuff that is stained, broken, and that you really don't want anymore, know that it's a really terrible thing to do. You know, have it mended, wash it first, make sure that the charity really can sell it for as much money as they possibly make. That's your duty to the charity that you are donating to. So as the consumer, do we need to be more vigilant about the choices we're making? A massive opportunity for us. And what we can do as citizens is to slow down this exaggerated, excessive, inadequate rhythm of mass production. We can only slow it down if we very clearly say we want better quality in the products that we buy and we absolutely demand better quality of life for the people who make them.